Good evening, I'm Rich Answer. Um, welcome to Get Real with Rich Answer. Tonight we are going to get real. So imagine you're a parent and this is your daughter's 40th birthday, or it would have been. Um, 24 years ago, um, a, a beautiful young woman named Jennifer Baker um, took her life. She was 16 years old uh, from Pleasant Hill. And tonight we're gonna talk to her mom about that, about what you do, how you get through something like that, um, and what you do when you get on the other side. That's what's coming up next on Get Real with Rick Dancer. And then the sliding glass door in my master bedroom blew in my- So Upper Camp Creek is evacuated. You can't erase the mistakes of your past without erasing the wisdom of your present. And there was a fear of getting blocked in. Welcome to In Bed with Rick Dancer, your chance to climb in bed with me. It's a sad story, but it's got it's, it's where you get to help a local veteran and his family. Kathy and I are sitting in the truck just looking at our house. And we started to cry. When she took the girls, my six-year-old little girl didn't have shoes on. I'm gonna take the first needle. This is gonna blow you guys away. I'm gonna do this right up close to you. Huh? I miss his uh, daily phone calls and text messages. To have a 10-year-old kid come on and just tell us some jokes is just so super charming. We need to find these people. So our show tonight is sponsored by Buck Sanitary Service and uh, Scott and uh, these are so wonderful. They don't care what we put on. They just want to make sure that we're having interesting and great conversations with people. And uh, so I understand that next time you have to go to the restroom and you don't have a Bucks porta potty there, you'll be able to use that porta potty. But if you are having an event, if you would support our sponsors, that would really help them. And that really helps us to keep this content going. Tonight is a story that I'm really um, excited to talk with you about because. Um, there's a lot of people struggling right now in our community um, with thoughts of suicide, uh, with people who have taken their life and you are left to deal with that. And 24 years ago, I got a, 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 an idea to do a series called uh, about suicide uh, with young people and uh, magically ended up meeting some people that I've known for the rest of my life now. And um, uh, one of them is Darlene Baker. And hi, Darlene. Hi. And so her husband, Timothy, is the he's the, the reason this is happening, because he uh, got a hold of me and said, Rick, I want you to know that um, on the 10th today would have been Jennifer Baker's 40th birthday. And I know it's hard, but we want to talk about this and get the word out and but first, I think what we might want to do, let's do this. I'm going to show her. Oh, my God. She is so beautiful. Look at that little girl. And the Letterman shot. And then, of course, we have the Lunchable. <laughs> so, Darlene, thanks for being here. I know it's hard, and it's a tough day. Um, and... Um, yeah, get your tissues ready. Happy birthday, Jennifer. That's right. Um, so the, talk about what what do we know that happened? Let's just kind of get people filled in and what happened. Uh, what do we know? It, you'd think, um, you know, it's been 24 years. You'd think I would know more um, than I do. Um, what we know um, is for some reason... Um, our daughter was extremely depressed um, and hit it really well. We had no clue. Uh, she was an only child and um, very active in school and sports. Um, and, and we just didn't see it. We, we didn't see it at all. Um, and um, she took a note to school and she left it at school and some kids read it, um, but they didn't take it seriously. And, um, but that's really our fault because we weren't teaching kids to take that stuff seriously. Right. Um, you know, it's, it's not on any of those, those kids, you know, they, we, we as the adults failed them to give them the information that they needed to have. And, um, 
we went to a volleyball tournament that weekend. She played all weekend. We were together 24 seven and morning, Monday morning, she got up and she took her life. Um, it, the, the note that she left us just said that she was sorry. Um, she really felt like this would be better for us. Um, somehow she, um, thought she was a disappointment, but it's, um, You know, I had I had suffered uh, bouts of depression um, myself when Jennifer was younger and everything, and um, I didn't do her any favors. I didn't talk about depression. We talked about everything else, but we didn't talk about depression. I didn't talk to her about my struggles with depression and that I had to go get help and that there was help available. I. You know, I, I thought I was doing her favor by hiding all of that stuff instead of showing her how you cope with those things that um, it happens to people. It happens to all kinds of people. Um, no one is exempt from this. There's there's no age group. There's no demographic. There There's no social economic group that's that gets to say, oh, this can't happen to us. Um, and I, I think we have to do a better job of showing people that this is real and that it can happen, but there are things, there are ways you can get help and that you can get through this. And I don't, I don't think she saw any other option. And it, it's it, it, in one respect, it has gotten much better because we do talk about it now. Back, back when you and I, when we did that series, the three of us, um, 24 years ago, this was, we were breaking some ground here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it is, it has gone so much farther. And, and if anything good could come out of this freaking pandemic is, I think it's even heightened the awareness of taking care of our mental health as well, as well as for children, as well as ourselves. Um, so it, it is, it is something that is talked about much more. But the problem is we still have more and more people and especially young people, this is becoming, it, it, I tell me if I'm wrong, it feels like it's becoming more of an option for people there. I mean, it's happening. I know our rates haven't changed. I don't think I, I was reading something where COVID hasn't changed the rates and I'm not blaming COVID. I'm just saying that I, you know, back when we did that, it was not something you, you you saw very often as much. And now I feel like it's um, it's becoming um, somewhat. Oh, God, I hate to say this word, but it's uh, it, it's it's somewhat normal when you hear that you, you're not you're not shocked as much as 24 years ago. I think people are talking about it. I, I think people are, are are not hiding it away. Um, you know, not saying what really happened. Um, I think it's easier to talk about. So I don't know that it's, it's necessarily more, but it's definitely, it's not hidden anymore. And that's a good thing. It is, it is, it is a good thing because people, um, you, you don't, you don't want realize what other people are, are going through. When someone hears that um, I lost Jennifer, they are immediately open to talking to me. Oh, I lost a cousin or I had a friend when I was in college because then they feel like it's safe that they can have that conversation with me and that I'm not going to judge them and I'm not going to judge the person they lost. What have you learned? What have I learned? <laughs> Big question. Uh, I, I think the biggest thing I've learned is to be um, more honest about my my own mental health and my ability to manage it on my own. 
I, I always, um, I'm an army brat. My dad was a drill sergeant. A lot of, uh, I have a lot of my dad's traits and it was really hard. And that was part of the reason that I hid that from Jennifer instead of having a conversation with her about, oh, this, I, I feel this way too. Or I had a hard time and I had to go, I had to go get help. And I think being vulnerable and honest with the people that you really care about is the most important. Does the vulnerability really give you more of a voice? Uh, is it power? I think there's power in vulnerability. And yet, sorry, my train's going by. But our, <laughs> our culture, I have my own train. Our culture is not, we, 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 we don't really do, we do pseudo vulnerability, but we don't really get vulnerable. And you really don't have a choice now. No. It no. pushed you into nowhere land and it's like mama bear kicks in and. Well, and you know, we, we run a bereavement group as well. And that is one of the things that I tell people, I said, you're going to have to find your way that you're going to live with this for the rest of your life. And this is, this is, my way this is how i have found my way to to deal with this to deal with the loss of jennifer that by having these conversations and talking to people this is how i make my way this is how i live with the loss of jennifer every day how is that because it i mean it's um you never it's always everywhere isn't it yeah yeah and um you know, when my um, oldest graduated from Pleasant Hill, it was the first graduation of one of my children because Jennifer never got there. So it, it's always those, it's always those kinds of things. You know, I, I was, I was so happy in that day but there was a little piece that oh it's yeah. it's 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 that as well and there's always those milestones that that happen so <clears throat> one of the things that <clears throat> excuse me um i love about you and timothy is so i covered this and kept in contact and then all of a sudden I found out, so, and I, not to get overly personal, but Timothy had a vasectomy after Jennifer. So yes. then he goes and they reverse it and they have a, an additional family after Jennifer's gone. So you had two boys and they're in their twenties and they know they have a sister and you guys, how, how helpful was, was that, was that pretty healing then to have to, what, what, um, well, you know, to be really honest, it's, it's not a place I go or spend very much time. And, um, because if I have Jennifer, I don't have them. Oh. If I have them, I don't have Jennifer. So, you know, if I could have what I wanted, I would have all three. Right. But but I, I, I don't. And so, um, it, Tim and I were, we always had wanted to be parents. We were just not done being parents right. and, um, we don't regret it for one second. It, it has been the most amazing thing. Our, our kids are amazing and, we are so proud of them and, and happy. Um, it's a little crazy that we're as old as we are now and, and still getting kids out of the nest. But, um, it, you know, it, we just, I, I just don't spend a lot of time in that place because it's, it's a no win right. situation. So what advice do you have for people that are, have had, I mean, we've had some recently, we've had some, 
a, a young girl recently in Eugene. Um, what do you recommend to people? What do they do? Um, I, I, probably the hardest thing is to go get help, but or to talk to people. But what, is that the is that the thing they need to do? Yeah, it is. And if they have, um, and I think you've got some links somewhere that you're going to put up in They're the, on the, the comments. Comment. Yeah, when yeah. you come to the story, there's all the links and phone numbers. Yeah. So Prevention Lane is a great website that has a lot of resources and it has what signs to look for. There's also a um, the uh, a questionnaire where you can go through and kind of self or, you know, to try and figure out the risk level for someone. Um, there's things on there, to, uh, what to say and what not to say. But the biggest thing is if you have concerns, you've got to ask somebody. Right. If you think someone is suicidal or at risk of hurting themselves, you've got to swallow it and you got to ask them. And nobody is expecting any of us to be able to fix that. We're not equipped to do that, but we can help get someone to a counselor to talk to and someone with professional that can help them. No one's asking anyone because you ask the question doesn't mean you have to, to solve it. If someone has an accident on the street you, and you're the first on the scene, you're not expected to render first aid. You are expected to call 911. And it's no different with suicide. No one's expecting you that you're going to fix that. You're going to solve that problem or have those answers. But you do want to help try and get someone to talk to somebody. Well, I think one of the things that I've learned about this just over the years doing this is how I don't think the people who take their lives ever understand because where they're at the damage that they're doing to the people they leave behind. Cause you, I don't think you can. No. And, and I absolutely hundred percent believe that I do not for <laughs> one second believe that Jennifer realized what was going on. I think the pain was so bad. Yeah. She just wanted it to stop and she didn't know another way. And <laughs> she could not see that she had any other options. That's why the, the talking and talking in the beginning and having those dialogues with the people that we care about from the get go, that if she was farther, uh, if she was not as far down in the depression that she was and we had a conversation, things could have been different. You know, the sooner you can talk to someone, the better it's going to be the more options they're going to be able to see and it's just we have to have those conversations so andrea asked why is it still such a stigmatized and kept secret why is it not on the forefront and okay to feel this way because it's it's shame it takes years and years of the turning of changing the way people think about mental health, um, you know? And if you just look at all the different things in our society that we say that, oh, they're just crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah, she, she, she's out there, you know, uh, off your meds. Right. Those those kinds of things are just commonplace in our language. And that just adds to the stigma, just like with any of the other kind of, um, just a second. Um, it started coming in. I turned my phone off, but uh, my computer <laughs> okay. picked it up. So. Um, but all of those just add to the stigma until, um, mental health is seen like going to the doctor for any other ailment. Nobody is going to criticize anyone for going to the doctor because they have cancer. No one is going right. to criticize anyone for going to the doctor because they need help with this or that. And until mental health is part of that, it's, it's not, it's not going 
to change. Is it different? Is it better than it was? It is. I, I, I can see it, it in the, the 24 years that I've been dealing with this, I can see that it is getting better. But just like with all the other social things that we've got going on, it takes time and it takes people willing to go, yeah. I mean, I've been in situations at work where people would have joke about, you know, putting a gun to their head because something's going crazy. And I will literally stop them and go, look, you probably don't know, but here's the deal. And you can't joke about those kinds of things. Right. You, do, you don't know who it's affecting. It's not a joke. You, you can't joke like that. Um, Chris says, I can tell you from personal experience, when you're in that space, you see everything and everyone would be better off without you. You have no hope. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I believe wholeheartedly Jennifer thought she was doing us a favor and could not see any options that she had. So what, what, and, um, I'm going to, I just have to go here. Cause what, cause I want to know Jennifer a little bit. <laughs> so what do you, what do you, um, like on today on her birthday, what do you miss the most about her? Like, what is it about like something? Well, it just her, her personality. She was a tomboy through and through. Um, she was just, um, she was tiny she was barely five foot at 16 and um, she was vertically challenged as she would state. Um, but she just, um, she, she was just funny and just, just happy. I mean, um, she used to play club volleyball and um, the volleyball for player. The, would, for Pleasant Hill, right? Um, she actually played for Emerald City. She played on a club team, oh. but she played oh, at Pleasant okay. Hill too. Okay. But um, so we'd go to these all day volleyball tournaments and there, you know, there'd be like 20 volleyball matches going on in these gyms. And um, the, the volleyball players would all stand. They would never sit. So the, the kids on the bench would be standing there by the coach. And I remember being in the stands and I'm like, what is going on? They're all standing there. Jennifer's on the end. And then all of a sudden, all of the kids move. And I'm like, what, what happened? What, what happened? So I talked to her and she's like, yeah, I'm not allowed to bring dill pickles to tournaments anymore because apparently my gas is really bad. And <laughs> I mean, she would do stuff like that. They're right in the middle of the game and she's over there farting. And I remember one time um, at, uh, we took flowers for her birthday and someone had brought a jar of dill pickles and, and left them. So, I, I mean, it, she, was, so she was famous for her flagellants. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Darlene Christine, who obviously knew her says she's a wired spark plug full of boundless energy. Yes. Yes. Yes, she is. So do you, you never stop talking about them, do you? Um, I don't because it's what I need. And right. that's um, what I'm, I'm really clear with people in their, um, their loss. You got to say what you need. And I tell people, I don't, I like to talk about Jennifer. I will always tell stories about Jennifer. You come into my house you will see all of my kids on the wall. There will be no doubt that I have three kids, but that's what I need. But what I need might not be what someone else needs. So it's up to each individual how they want to deal with it and how they need to deal with it. And, and so, we, so we as other people need to ask someone instead of, I think what probably you probably could attest to this, I'm sure, is somebody walks up and hymns and haws and it's like, just ask me what to, you know what I mean? Like right. I, I recognize it from cancers. People come up and they'll, well, first of all, cause I had prostate cancer. They looked down at my crotch and I'm going, if, if you can see something from there, we're, we're both in really big trouble. <laughs> but yeah. instead of just asking what, what happened, right. what do you, what can I do? And, and 
Because I think sometimes people want to pretend like it didn't happen or don't want to talk about it. When sometimes you might be in the mood to say, no, I'll tell you about Jennifer. She was awesome. Right. You right. know, that kind of thing. Exactly. They don't. And especially at the beginning, it was really hard for people to talk to us because they were afraid about upsetting us. And um, I mean, nothing makes me feel better than to hear someone talk about Jennifer. And, um, you know, so, but I, I think you're right. It's really important to find out what they need. And what I tell people in group is, you know what, the rest of you guys out there, if you're uncomfortable, too bad. What we are dealing with is far worse than what you are having your five minutes of not feeling comfortable. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You get to walk. This is what I always thought with can cancer. People go, oh, you'll be fine. And it's like, whoa, 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 wait, wait a minute. My definition of fine and yours changed when the doctor said this or when you lost your child. So right. don't tell me that I'm going to be fine. No. <laughs> you know, and it's like, you, you, you know, we have different definitions here. Yeah. Um, so tell them one of the really super positive, one of the many super positive things you've done is you started the Jennifer Baker uh, Foundation, this fund. Yes. And tell people what that is and how they can get involved in what you do with it. So it's a fund we started in uh, 2003. Um, and it was to support um, uh, things in Lane County that promoted um, suicide prevention and reducing the stigma around mental health and that kind of stuff. And so um, We've uh, worked several times with the um, uh, Suicide Prevention Coalition. Um, and uh, so we, if they're doing a project, um, like one year we helped create posters that were, um, that had crisis line numbers and stuff. And so those were distributed around the community and within the school districts. Um, and, and, and different things like that. But um, we primarily, um, American Foundation of Suicide Prevention is a great national organization and they do a lot of fundraising. But we created the fund because I wanted the funds to stay within Lane County and be able to work on projects within Lane County. That's really important to you. Yeah, yeah. So if, since this is Jennifer's birthday, Yes. What would you as her mother like to tell her? Oh. I, I really would have loved to see the woman, the strong woman I know that she would have grown into. If we could have got through that moment in time. Yeah. She would have been amazing, don't you think? I do. Yeah. And a good mom and funny yeah. and ornery. <laughs> <laughs> well, she gets that from Timothy, obviously, right? Yeah, obviously, not from me. So are you, are you braver than you were 24 years ago? Uh, I don't know if I'm braver. I'm not as naive. So, um, it can happen to me. It can happen in the best of families. It can happen in the most supportive environments. Um, I'm just not, I'm not as naive. Right. You, yeah, you, you, it's a big, huge, giant reality check, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So last thing I'll ask you, you put your phone number and I put it in the thing up there. Why do you put that out there for, cause I mean, you can't, you really care about the people that are going through this, don't you? 
Well, when um, Jim and I lost Jennifer, we tried to find uh, a bereavement group and there were only, um, uh, you, you know, groups that uh, people who had lost children from illness um, or, you know, just general kinds of grief. And our grief was very different. Um, and uh, so we started um, the bereavement group in 2003. And it is a group just for those that have lost someone um, by suicide. And we meet every month, have since 2003. Um, the pandemic has been kind of crazy. So we've been doing Zoom and meeting outside and doing all kinds of uh, funky things to kind of keep it going. But it's a place that I think is real important for people like us to be able to come and talk about what they're going through, hear people who know what you're going through. Tim and I had tremendous support. I, you know, I can't tell you how grateful I am for the support that Tim and I had. But being with people who have actually walked your walk and know where you're you're going and can a hundred percent relate to you, not feel like you're going to be judged, not feel like the person you lost is going to be judged, and be able to just get some time to be able to talk about this. Right. And so it is very important. It is very important to us um, that people have that place and people come to group and, you know, they may hang out for a couple of months and then we won't see them for a while and they'll pop back in three or four years later. And it's just, we want to be there when people need us and help them find their way. Darlene Baker. You are one brave woman. Thank you. You're very, yeah, I, I just adore you. Um, <clears throat> and what you, it's just a mom's love is there's nothing like it. Yeah. Um, and I think for people to sit out and experience this with you, to watch you and stuff, um, it's really helpful for people. So I would, I'm going to make a little assumption. and I'm going to think that little Jennifer would be pretty proud of her mom right now too. She probably she probably have some interesting things to say to you as well. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. you will get that chance. You will get that chance. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing your daughter's birthday with us and your story because I think that can help a lot of people. And I'm going to close it out and let you go to your husband and go uh, hang out and um, you know maybe. A little cheer to, to Jennifer tonight. Maybe everybody could give a little toast to Jennifer Baker tonight. Um, Thank you, Rick, for always being willing to help make raise awareness for this. You're welcome. It's very appreciated. But by the grace of God, I did not end up there too. So yeah. I understand the struggle. Yeah. Thanks, Darlene. Tell Tim, tell Tim the big chicken that that thanks for getting me into this. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. We had that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you make him pay, okay? All right. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, that's kind of, yeah, that's what it is. Um, so anyway, yeah, we want to thank Darlene and Tim. Um, you know, what's so weird about life is, you know, I had no idea 24 years ago when I did that story that this would be like part of my foundation of my world. You don't know those things when that happens. And um, another young woman who was in that series too that did uh, tried five or six times to take her life did not. Um, and um, in June I'm going to her wedding. And it's just the world is a very interesting place if you look at the stories of people. And I want to thank Buck Sanitary Service because we could not do this without them. Um, Another thing that we're doing, you want to know what an amazing place we live in? It's just people really do care and they want to help people. So I, I have Rogers uh, Gardens, a nursery here in town, called me up and they're giving $1,000. And we're doing a contest where there's a lot of people out there struggling. And um, so we're going to give, and, and restaurants are struggling. So Richard 
with Rogers Gardens says, I want to give a thousand dollars and let's give out 10 $100 gift cards to people, uh, to restaurants. And, and so we'll help the restaurants, but we'll also help people in, in need that want them. So what I want you to do is go to my, my website, rickdancer.com, and there's a contest page on there. Just hit the contest page. And then you give me the name of someone you think should be nominated to, to get a hundred dollar card. And then all month we're doing shows on those different businesses. Um, that are involved, and I should read those off so you know who they are. Um, Pig and Turnip was last night, Addie's, Craig's Lucky Lager, Twisted River Saloon, and Griff's, all in Springfield. And our sponsors are Buck Sanitary Service, the Car Wash, the Cobra Corrode Car Wash, Any Lab Test Now Eugene, Priority One Heating and Air Conditioning, Chris Dental Family Dentistry, and the Hydrate Bar. So all month we're going to be showing you those businesses so they get a freebie to help them show who they are. We're giving them a hundred, two hundred dollar gift cards to all five that you then get to give to your friends. I mean, it's just. And then I had a company call me up today and say, "Hey, we might want to do a thousand dollars in April." This is where we live. All this stuff matters. So if you are somebody who's struggling, and there's been a couple of uh, suicides in the area that I know of, and people that are around you that 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 did this, and you're struggling with that, um, give Darlene a call go to those websites and find out because you're in pain too and you need to get uh, to find out how you deal with that if you are someone who is uh, thinking of um, taking your life but first of all please don't um, please um, you, you matter <laughs> you know i think when you're in that hard place you don't understand that you matter and every single voice matters every single person on this planet matters and you just need to find people who can help speak that into your life. So if you need something like that, there's prevention lines up there. There's emergency phone numbers um, up on the top of this, and you can call those and get somebody to talk with you and, um, and then tell somebody, um, let somebody know. So another parent, another family is not devastated uh, because they didn't know. Um, so talk to people about it. And if you see someone in your life that you think is struggling with this, please don't be like, oh, you know, I don't know. I don't want to say anything. Say something. Because if, if they do, then you're going to feel horrible. And we don't want that. And another thing, I just for kind of an education purpose, um, and this is not a hit on anyone, because someone used this in there, and please do not take this. I hope that we have an open enough line of com communication that we can understand if I, I always want you to correct me if I say something wrong, but I want to also help correct you so that you understand that. Um, but someone mentioned it here and it's not, that it's not who mentioned it. I just want to bring it up. We don't anymore. We don't say that someone committed suicide. Okay. That's just a term. Um, that's really, really hard for families. It's not, it's take their lives or died by suicide. And I learned that the hard way because I said it on a show and then a parent called and told me that. So I'm just educating you as I get educated. Um, and so that's just a term. And so when you're saying it, say died by suicide or took their life, don't say committed suicide. Um, and, and, and again, I'm not being nitpicky. I just, I know from the families that that's very, very difficult. And so um, yeah, we just, we just kind of helped each other out. Okay. All right. Um, tomorrow night, we're going to be um, digging into a couple of things. One is people who live up the McKenzie River are getting permitted and fined over the top by the county in their opinion. And their opinion matters. So tomorrow, they're going to come on and talk with us about some of the things that are being hoisted on them that they're upset about. And uh, then we'll let the county do what it's going to do. But you are the county. So they, they're having a meeting on Monday night up at the high school and they really need our support. They need us up there to say, hell no, you don't get to do this. So we're going to talk about that tomorrow. And we have the new mayor of Springfield. Uh, Sean Van Gordon is going to be on tomorrow. and talk about some things that he plans to push forward uh, for Springfield. So that's what that's what we got coming for, for the for the rest of the week. So go to rickdancer.com and find somebody that you really, you should see some of the stories that are on there. You can't see them because I get to see them, but we'll share with you. But some really powerful stories of people that are going to get a hundred bucks. And that'd be fun. Just all of a sudden mind that you got a hundred bucks because somebody cared enough about you to turn your name in. 
<laughs> and that a nursery in town, a garden is going to do that for you. All right. So we leave on this note. Uh, let me go do something really quick here. I got to find this. We're going to do this. We leave on this note. That is Jennifer. And Jennifer, happy birthday to you. And I hope where you are, that you are at peace. And I'll tell you, your parents really, really, they do miss you. And, um, but they are doing great things. So don't feel bad. They're doing amazing things with your memory and with your life still. Because you may have taken your life, but you didn't, you're still here. And we all know that. And I hope you do too. So happy birthday, young lady, even though you're actually 40 today. Good night.